So first let's look at the financial committees and the first one that we look at is the public accounts committee. So these are the facts about uh, public accounts committee in brief. Um, it comes uh, right in, it, it was originated in 1921 through the government of India act of 1919. Uh, it has 22 members, 15 from Lok Sabha and 7 from Rat Sabha. It is an elected committee. The members of the committee are elected by proportional representation by a single transferable vote, which means that each party gets some representation in the committee based on its share in the house. Then the chairman of the public accounts committee is appointed by the speaker. Important word here being appointed. It is not elected. He is appointed by the speaker. And by convention, and convention um, especially after 1967 around, the chairman always belongs to, uh, to the opposition. So he is a member of the opposition. Other miscellaneous things about uh, public accounts committee are that it has a term of one year. And if there is, if a person is a minister in the government, he cannot be part of the PS, the public accounts committee. Now, what does the public accounts committee do? It examines the annual audit reports of the CAG, which are laid before the parliament by the president. Now, quick pointer, especially in terms of uh, the prelim examination, uh, the report of the CAG is laid before the parliament by the president. So, this you may note, there's many times question on this. So, that is what the public accounts committee does. Now, you need to first understand what are the kind of reports that CAG tables. CAG basically has three basic reports. First is the report, audit report on appropriation accounts, then audit report on finance accounts, and audit report on public undertakings. Now, what is the audit report on appropriation accounts? Audit reports on appropriation accounts is the actual expenditure, the comparison of actual expenditure with the expenditure sanctioned by the parliament through the Appropriation Act. So see, in polity especially, you need to look at each word and sometimes it will give a clue to you to either understand what it is or to remember what it is. Now appropriation, you might have heard of the appropriation bill uh, which later becomes the appropriation act which is by which the sanction of the expenditure is done. So what will the CAG look at? He will look at whether the actual expenditure matched with the expenditure sanctioned through the appropriation act and that report is the audit report on the appropriations account. Then you have the audit report on finance account which is the annual receipts and disbursements of the, of the union. So overall, so you are, when you're auditing, you're looking at all the finance accounts of the government. What will be there in a finance account? The receipts and the disbursements overall. So that is again a report of the CAG. And the third report of the CAG is the audit report on public undertakings. Now, as far as public accounts committee is concerned, it looks at the first two, that is the audit report on appropriation accounts and the audit report on finance accounts, but it doesn't look at audit report on public undertakings. Now, uh, so if we want to go into the details, first of all, you need to understand, uh, you know, whenever you're looking at the expenditure of the government, so you need to understand what is the money being spent on, which is the money that is being spent on, uh, uh, the money that is being spent, is it being spent on the right thing? So that is the what part of it. Then the, it is how much is being spent. So, okay, you're spending on the right thing, but how much are you spending? That is the economy, etc. Are you spending in line with the government policy? Are you, you know, really spending it well? That is the how much. Who means whether the required sanctions have been taken or the person who is spending the money is actually authorized to spend the money. So what does the committee look for? It looks for waste, loss, corruption and inefficiency. So uh, if I if I want to you know uh, frame it more uh, formally, so the money that has been disbursed, whether it was legally available for the applied service or purpose, that is the what. Then the appropriation has been made in accordance with the related rules. That is how was it spent or whether you were you know the uh, it was spent in accordance with the rules. Then the expenditure conforms to the authority that governs it. That is the expenditure was done by the right person. That is the who of it. And the standards of prudence efficiency were met in the expenditure. So these are the things which the public accounts committee looks at. So these are the four points that you basically need to remember. But the, the previous part of the what, how and uh, this one. The what, who, how much. The what, who and how much will help you remember these, these large points. And you have to look for waste, loss, corruption and inefficiency. In what? In the audit report on appropriation accounts and audit report on finance accounts.
and again you know when you are forming an answer if you just expand on these terms like what is the audit report on appropriation accounts that is the, the public accounts committee looks at the cag report on appropriation account which checks the actual expenditure uh, is in conformance with the expenditure sanctioned by the parliament through the appropriation act and you know you build your answer like this it will be very easy for you to remember the whole answer and you will be able to get a very well flowing answer for your question okay so we've done this so what else it also examines the account of state corporations trading companies and manufacturing projects and the audit reports of cag on them except those public undertakings which are allotted to the committee on public undertakings then autonomous and semi autonomous bodies which are audited by cag and also they examine the money spent on any service during a financial year in excess of the amount granted by the lok sabha so all these are also functions of the public accounts committee so um, what are the negatives or what are the you know um, things which the uh, public accounts committee doesn't concern it is a question of policy it cannot question whether the policy was right or wrong second it is only an advisory committee it does not have any legal binding force on the government then it's a post mortem analysis that is you know once the let us say inefficiency has been done or a loss has happened then you tell that the loss happened it's not pre facto where you where in the committee may warn that okay look uh, you know uh, this is what is happening with this is wrong what is happening and you please stop this so it's more of a post mortem and it's not an executive body so it cannot issue orders so it's more of an advisory kind of a body okay, now we look at the estimates committee the estimates committee was the first estimates committee was formed in uh, 1950 on the recommendation of john mathai who was the then finance minister initially it had 25 members which was increased to 30 in 1956 all the 30 members are from lok sabha this is an important distinction uh, again the members are elected uh, by a proportional representation uh, by means of a single transferable vote which means that each party will have a representation in the committee depending on their representation in the lok sabha the chairman is appointed by the speaker he is not elected he is appointed by the speaker and by convention he always belongs to the he or she always belongs to the ruling party miscellaneous things are that the term of the committee is one year and if a person is a minister he or she cannot be part of the estimates committee now what is an estimates committee it can also be called a continuous economy committee because it examines the estimates included in the budget and suggests economies in public expenditure now Uh, just a brief point here the public accounts committee is a very you know post facto kind of a committee so once the expenditure has happened and the auditor has the cag has audited he will the committee will examine the reports but this committee is actually looking at the budget the estimates of the budget and is suggesting economies in the public expenditure so this is happening much at the beginning of the whole you know the financial exercise so uh, what does it what does it tell you it tells you it recommends efficiencies which are consistent with the current policy so like you have a policy and you are you doing an expenditure uh, which is related to the current policy the committee may say that okay you know this is a more efficient way of doing the same thing secondly it can also suggest an alternative policy so it may say look you are going in for this policy but you know this second policy may make more sense so that is also something it can do then it checks whether the money is well laid out within the limits of the policy implied in the estimates which means that you know a policy is there and there will be various aspects of the policy so whether the money is properly laid out for each of these aspects within the policy which have been implied in the estimates also it suggests the form in which the estimates shall be presented to the parliament so just to understand you can just understand this as you know the format in which the estimates will be presented to the parliament so that it is easy to understand for the members of parliament and it doesn't take too much time so what are the shortcomings of the estimates committee or the whole system of the estimates committee is that it examines the budget estimates only after they have been voted by the parliament so i told you it is more pre facto than the public accounts committee but within the budget exercise it is only examining the budget estimates once they have been voted by the parliament so you can understand if it is you know recommending a policy change or efficiencies it may or may not be considered because the vote has already happened so it cannot question the policy laid down by the parliament but it can give advice regarding its view on that policy so that brings us to the third point the it's it's an advisory committee and the recommendations it makes are not binding on the government now every year only certain selected ministries and departments are examined so all the ministries are covered by rotation 
so uh, let's say there are 100 ministries and departments so in the first year let's say ministries from serial number 1 to 10 are covered by the committee so the next year ministries from 11 to 20 will be covered so it's not that each year each ministry's work is being examined also it lacks the expert assistance of the CAG like the public accounts committee used to have the assistance of CAG in its work this committee does not have that which is a major shortcoming because a lot of this work is very technical in nature now moving on to the committee on public undertakings uh, this was started the system was started in 1964 on the recommendations of the Krishna Menon committee initially it used to have 15 um, members which was raised to 22 in 1975 of which 15 are from the Lok Sabha and 7 from the Raj Sabha the members are elected uh, by a proportional representation and a single transferable vote so as you can see that all the three financial committees have this feature they are elected by proportional representation and single transferable vote which means that each party has a representation in the committee based on the share of that party in the uh, parliament the chairman is appointed by the speaker and he is by convention a member of the Lok Sabha now um, miscellaneous things are that it has a term of one year and a minister cannot be part of the committee so what does the committee on public undertakings do it examines the report and reports and accounts of the public undertakings it examines the reports of the CAG on public undertakings and it also examines whether the affairs of the public undertakings are being managed in accordance with sound business principles and prudent commercial practices and other functions allotted by the speaker. So basically it's looking at all the records and apart from just the financials, it's also seeing whether the uh, functioning of the public undertakings is in accordance with sound business principles and prudent commercial practices which means that it's actually looking into the business aspect of the public undertaking as well so what does it not look at it doesn't look at major government policy as distinct from business or commercial functions now um, public undertakings are obviously a venture of the government but if there are certain major policy decisions which are involved in the running then this committee will not look at those and also the matters of day-to-day -day administration it doesn't look at it looks at more the financials overall and also the overall running of the business in terms of sound business practices so what are the shortcomings it cannot take up the examination of more than 10 to 12 public undertakings in a year so this is similar to the previous committee again so um, it's just looking at just 10 to 12 p uh, public undertakings and the next year it will rotate and go to the other 10 or 10 to 12 again it's its work is in the nature of a post-mortem so once the committee has you know spent its all this money or has conducted the business for the year it just examines the reports and the CAG report on it and gives its recommendations post facto and it does not look into technical matters as its members are not technical experts so a lot of the government undertakings are actually very technical in nature they may involve um, a very you know technical matters like mining and you know high, highly technical uh, ventures so because the members do not have any technical expertise so they really don't look into those things also the committee's recommendations are advisory and are not binding on the ministries so again that's another shortcoming